speak about each artist individually. Let's get right into it. I'm pretty sure most of you watching this channel have heard about the infamous 27 Club, but just in case there's any of you guys that might not know what the 27 Club is, let me give you a quick rundown. The 27 Club is a club of celebrities, mostly artists, in which all passed at the young age of 27. In today's episode, we're going to be looking into some of the names a part of the 27 Club, and we're also going to try to understand why these artists passed away. The first artist we're going to be talking about is Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson was a blues artist in the 1930s who was legendary not just for his music. Many believe Robert Johnson sold this soul to the devil to be able to master playing the guitar. The story goes, when Robert was a young man, he had the desire to become a blues star even though he wasn't very good at playing the guitar. He often played the guitar around this town to anyone who would listen, but no one seemed to enjoy it. One day, he was told that if he wanted to get good at playing the guitar, he should take his guitar to the crossroads near Dockery Plantation at midnight. Johnson made his way to the crossroads at midnight and placed his guitar on the floor in the middle of the crossroad. A tall black man dressed in all black showed up and offered Robert Johnson a deal. He would turn Robert Johnson into a master blues player. In return, he wanted Johnson's soul. Johnson wanted to be a successful artist, so he took the deal and the man then took the guitar, tuned it, and played on it, and returned it to Johnson. Robert instantly became a master guitarist, and the town quickly took notice, with many people well aware of what Johnson did for his fame. Not long after Johnson made this deal with the shadowy figure, he would soon meet his end at the age of 27, mysteriously, with no one knowing why. Robert, before his passing, had written and recorded a song called The Crossroad. In the song, Robert Johnson seems to be referring to the very day he made his deal. In the song, Johnson sings, Went to the crossroads, fell down on my knees. I went to the crossroad, fell down on my knees. Ask the Lord above, have mercy now. Save poor Bob if you please. Many have come to believe Johnson made a deal with the devil for fame and fortune, and the tall black man that met him at the crossroads was Lucifer himself. I remember the first time I actually heard about the Robert Johnson story, and it was very fascinating to me because I've heard so many artists in modern time, the story about selling their soul to the devil. For it to go back so far in history, the beginning of the music industry was actually starting. For that system to be in place, or at least that theory of people selling their souls to the devil already have been there, I find it intriguing. To me, it kind of proves how this is engraved into the music industry. Well, when it comes to Robert Johnson, the legend is that he sold the soul to master the guitar. Whether I believe that or not, I'm not really sure, but I do think it's weird that he passed at 27 and no one really knows how he passed, which is kind of the craziest thing to me. When I looked into the situation, I looked into that right there. I wanted to know if anyone knew what happened. There was a few theories, if I'm not mistaken. They said that it was a, a jealous husband of one of his lovers that came after him and took him out. The thing is, is that if this is what the people in the town were already saying, this is the legend for a reason. When I look at the situation and I research into it, and just the, the lone fact that so many people said he could not play the guitar, he disappears, he comes back, and now he's a he's a superstar. You know, it's not like now we have YouTube and all these programs. This is a poor man who doesn't have money or doesn't have the resources to be in the rooms with the best trainers. And even if he did, this being able to master a guitar, and you should know this, you play the guitar. It probably took you a few years or months at least to learn it and be able to master the guitar. Yeah, I've definitely heard that part about his story where, you know, everyone who knew him before the legend, you know, happened said that he was a mediocre player. He definitely wasn't the best player, but he also wasn't the worst, but he wasn't that great. Within a few months, like a short few months, he, he became a master, something that people spend their whole lives trying to achieve. To think that this is kind of the same story that still goes on today. You know, there's so many artists that they are work their whole lives to have a career. Those artists will never make it. But then these, there's these odd few that they drop one song, they already have a record label behind them. They blow up. They're so huge. And they have a bunch of occultic imagery, a bunch of satanic imagery in their music videos. It just seems like it's a nod to this right here to the story of Robert Johnson, the beginning of it all, to what started the 27 Club. People say if, you know, there's so many artists that sells their soul to the devil and they're still alive past 27, what is it about 27 that these artists pass away at and why do they have to? To not think that there's something odd about all these celebrities passing at 27, that just kind of makes you blind because the evidence is there. One artist passing at 27, okay. Two, three, at what point does it start to add up where you go like, this is kind of strange? 
There's a reason for this. It can be something like a ritual offering where a 27 year old has to be ritually offered for the music industry. I could see where you're coming from. I'm not sure if it's entirely about a ritual offering, but to me, it's very odd that it's the list is mostly musicians, maybe a handful of actors and, you know, other people in entertainment. But it's like 90 percent musicians and people that have changed music in the past hundred plus years. So you think that the Robert Johnson legend is just that a legend that it has no truth to it, that he really just, you know, disappeared and came back as a master guitarist. Now that I'm thinking about it with the case of Robert Johnson, it seems like it's more than just a coincidence, because how do you become a master at an instrument within a few months time? I feel like as a musician, um, some people are just born with it. Some people you can practice years and you get better, but you don't become a virtuoso like people talk about Robert Johnson. The entire situation to me, it seems clear to me that Robert Johnson sold this off. I don't think that people in this town would just make this up. I don't think that this would be his legend if it wasn't any truth to it. Especially since, like you said, how do you go from being a amateur guitarist to a master guitarist in one year when statistically and realistically, that just doesn't happen. And the story just correlates what I've continued to go on in the music industry since. I don't think that Robert Johnson was the first person to sell a soul. I honestly feel like this goes way back. Well, people also have to realize, you know, during Robert Johnson's time was basically the beginning of recorded music. Music was played live mostly before that. And Robert Johnson still played live, but that around the, you know, the early 1900s is really when the technology allowed so. So obviously people start recording music, then other people see, oh, there's a business in this. We can start selling it. Exactly. And then to think that since the beginning of the record label, since they started, the story of selling your soul sprung up. And like I've said before, and I'll stand by this, a lot of these executives are Freemasons. The next member of the 27 Club that I actually wanted to talk about was Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain was the lead singer of the rock band of the 90s, becoming one of the biggest rock stars of all time. Most people know a lot about Kurt. What they don't know is that he was an open occultist that practiced ritual magic. In my opinion, it appeared that Kurt knew his time was running short and decided to go back to his home state of Washington. Kurt appeared very depressed in his last days, and in my opinion, it could be because he knew what was coming. Nirvana was the biggest rock band in the 90s, and many credit them as the group that popularized grunge, the subgenre that took over the 90s rock scene. Still to this day, many have speculated what truly happened to Kurt Cobain, who disappeared without telling his wife or friends where he was going. He was only ever seen again when he was discovered at his Seattle home. Many believe Kurt Cobain did what he did because he was depressed, but what if there's something far more sinister that took place instead? What if Kurt Cobain paid a devastating price for his fame and fortune? Just like many of the biggest celebrities, it appears that Kurt Cobain was an occultist who practiced ritual magic. Kurt Cobain was even quoted saying, I will get stoned and worship Satan. According to many articles online, Kurt was obsessed with Anton LaVey, diving deep into the occult world. He even tried to get in contact with Anton LaVey in order to have him play CeeLo for Nirvana's Nevermind album. It seems that Kurt Cobain might have sold his soul to be able to reach the top of the world. Kurt gained the world at the price of his soul. When I think about Kurt Cobain, the situation was always odd to me because here we go, one of the biggest artists in the world. It just wouldn't make sense that having at the peak of his career, having it all, why would he, you know, end himself? I see where you're coming from. In my opinion, Kurt Cobain was obviously a very troubled person, you know, started from when he was a kid and he started Nirvana and, you know, they were a pretty, pretty decent underground band and they got a lot of credit for starting that sound and being an underground band. And by the time Nevermind release, everyone who knew them at that point called them a sellout because it was one of the biggest records ever. And, you know, they started a new movement. Kurt Cobain couldn't deal with that pressure. He was obviously troubled. So you mix being troubled for years with huge boost in popularity seemingly overnight. And I feel like that was the recipe for disaster for Kurt Cobain. I find it interesting that you just mentioned how he was amateur. He was an amateur rock band. And then one day to the next, he's the biggest rock stars, you know, and they're being called sellout. That's kind of the same thing we we're just speaking about with Robert Johnson. You know, you said that Robert Johnson, the story was that he was an amateur player. I read that he was a terrible player, but you read that he was an amateur player. Right. I heard Robert Johnson was, you know, sounded like he played for like a year or two. He was that crazy. He could probably play in a band, but he wasn't like playing circles around people like people know him now. I don't think that... Kurt Cobain's situation was that as clear as that, like, oh, he folded to the pressures of the music industry. Most artists work for this moment their entire lives, and I'm pretty sure that's what he did as well. 
you dream of that moment when you make it. At that point in his life, he's worth so much money. You know, he's a superstar. Everybody loves him. Even though the love is fake, this is still the moment that he's waited for. So I, I don't see him doing that to himself in that moment. I would have seen it happening later on. Now, if it would have been like an accidental thing, you get my point? That's something I understand. But I feel like even in the way that they described how the incident happened, I don't think that he would have done that to himself. I think that this was something that he paid a price for, just like Robert Johnson, which is in a similar situation. It's a, it's an incident that happened in a room locked away where no one really knows what happened to this day. You get my point? All we know is what we could assume off of the evidence that we're being presented. And the evidence is that it looks like he might have done it to himself. But if you start looking at it a little bit deeper, it starts to appear that what happened to Kurt Cobain could have been something far more sinister. I agree that, you know, most musicians or artists who, you know, blow up work for a long time to get to that point. But I'm going to have to disagree with you on the point that he didn't do this himself. I believe he did do this to himself. Yes, long time to get to that certain point. But maybe... Maybe it just happened so fast for him. Again, I truly believe he was a troubled person. And if you listen to grunge music, the majority of bands that are in the grunge genre or emo genre or whatever, it's most of the lyrical content is about them not being happy with life. You know what I mean? What is it to a multi-platinum selling artist who became famous for singing sad lyrics, who is now popular because he sang sad lyrics, and now he's pressured to keep doing that? It basically means he has to be sad in order to make more music. When I look at Kurt Cobain, I'm not going to say that he wasn't troubled, but I can't deny the fact that he was an occultist. The fact that he was troubled doesn't overshadow the fact that he still did do rituals and spoke about, you know, satanic stuff, and which was, you can say, you can argue was popular at the time because other rock bands are doing it. There has to be a reason that in rock and roll they did it. They're doing it in hip hop. They're doing it in pop. You know, they're doing it in R&B. They're literally doing it in every genre. With the Kurt Cobain situation, what I felt happened was that he did indeed sell his soul. He sold his soul, and I, I believe that he's one of the instances that did it ritually, just like Robert Johnson. In the case of Kurt Cobain, I still believe that he did it to himself. Mm -hmm. I feel like so much happened in his life at that point that he just couldn't handle anymore. You know, whether it was, you know, the fame or his wife, Courtney, doing all the crazy stuff that she does. I just feel like he couldn't amount to the pressure anymore. Even if, even if he was a millionaire and, you know, super popular at that point, I feel like certain people just fold under that pressure. And I, I agree. I agree that they do. I just, I don't think that they would go out in such a harsh way too. That's like one of the worst ways. Like, like I understand picking a, a less gruesome way, but for him to go out that way, it just seems like over the top. Well, a lot of people don't realize that that wasn't his first attempt. That was just... The successful one. I guess it could be a strange incident, but then how do you explain the 27? You think he just chose to go out in the 27 Club to be a part of the 27 Club? Because I, I can argue that the 27 Club didn't even exist really until him. He was really the person that popularized the term. You understand my point? It could just be coincidental, but how could it be coincidental when we have a whole list of these people? Well, right. I feel like before Kurt Cobain, there were people in the 27 Club, but once he passed, that's when people really started looking back and, you know, went, hmm, this is kind of strange that, you know, all these famous people, whether it's Jimi Hendrix or Jim Morrison or Robert Johnson or Kurt Cobain, now they're all, we all realize that they were all the same age when they passed. You think that it's just a coincidence that all these people passed that they...